Hi everyone, in this video I will cover 8 effects in 8 minutes. Some of them are easy to do and some are a bit more advanced, but don't worry, I will explain every step of the way. Personally, the last one is one of my favorites. We will begin with the bass shake effect. First, here in the edit tab, we will go here to click at toolbox add effects and by clicking here, we can search for adjustment clip. Click and drag it into the timeline. Now, adjust it into the part of impact or shake that you want to add. We then need to copy the clip. You can do that by Ctrl C, the right button, or simply by clicking and pressing Alt at the same time, drag your clip upward. Let's go now here at Open Effects, and you will search for Camera Shake. Click and drag it into the first adjustment clip. Click here at Effects in the Inspector tab and decrease just by a tiny bit the motion and speed scale. Increase by a tiny bit the motion blur. We will search for one more effect here at Open Effects already selected for Gaussian Blur. Click and apply it into the second adjustment clip. Make sure that your timeline has its indicator here in the beginning of the clip and in the effects section of Inspector. Slide the value all the way up to zero and click in this diamond icon to add a keyframe. Go to the middle of the composition Change the values to approximately 0.4 for horizontal and vertical strength. And to finalize, here at the end, slide the value down again to 0. Here is the result. The next one is Ghost Effect, used a lot in video clips for example. The first thing to do is duplicate your clip. I will use press Alt and click and drag the video. Now. I decrease a bit the length of this portion and by clicking on it, here in the Inspector tab, I'll reduce its opacity here to approximately 35% in the Composite tab. Now, I click and drag the portion I delimited and place a little bit to the right or left to make it a ghost effect. Here is the result. The next one is RGB Split. To do it, simply here at Edit Page, go to the Open Effects, Add Effects, and search for Prism Blur. Click in your video, go to the Inspector, and here in the Effects option, decrease the blur strength to zero and increase or decrease the aberration, distance, and strength to your liking. That's pretty much it. But let's say you want to apply it only to a part in the video. This woman, for example, still is very simple. Go to the color page, just press Alt plus S to duplicate your clip. With the effects here open, we will search for the prism blur effect. Click and drag it into our duplicate and again, decrease the blur strength and increase or decrease the aberration distance and strength to your liking. Click in this downward arrow and select power window. Now, click in this icon to open this window and select one of the available shapes or just draw your own. I'll select this linear one here and adjust it into the woman dancing. Note that you can also change the softness of the borders of your selection. In this case, we have four possible softness selectors because of the four sides that my selection has. Here is the final result. The next one will be sound bump. First, here in the edit tab, go to the parts of which the beat of the music goes and then add this marking on them. Usually, you will see a pick like this one. Here, you should add your markers. Now, right before the marker, click in this diamond icon of zoom to add a keyframe. Go one or two frames forward and increase the zoom to 1.08. Then, go a little bit forward, resize the zoom to one and click in the diamond icon again. Do this process over all of the markers. To make things even simpler and you just do the process one time, simply click in this icon right here and you can see the last keyframe added. All you have to do now is simply Ctrl C, Ctrl V those two dots in every location that you added your markings and you are good to go for the sound bump effect. Here is the result. The next effect is to add a timer. Here in the Edit tab, just search for text here with this toolbox selected. We will have two results, Basic Text and Custom Text. We will use the Custom Text. Increase its length as you like it and click at the text. Click then in the Inspector right here and if you want to adjust the text position, you won't be able to do it in this window, as you can see. 
Instead, we need to go to the layout option here and then change the values of center X and Y to change its position. I'll leave it right here at the left border. Now, let's go back to the text option. Right click in the box and select this time code option. The layout already showed to us some numbers, but to make it even better, if we go down this window, we can slide these circles and see the numbers going away. The more you go to the right, the time scale decreases. And the more you go to the left, the time scale increases. For example, from days to hours and milliseconds to seconds respectively. To make it better, I'll leave only the seconds and the minutes showing up in my video. And that's pretty much it. We will go now to the film grain effect. Here in the edit page, just drag the film grain effect available for free in Pexas.com into your timeline. Link will be available in the description. Let me delete the audio section that came with the film grain here and yep, we're good to go. Now click in the film grain video and then click in this inspector. Scroll down a bit here in the composite section and change the composite mode to a screen. Great, now just increase the zoom level of your video and scroll down a bit here into opacity. Decrease its value until you find the video looks good enough. Change the length of the grain to match your video if necessary and that's pretty much it. Here is the end result. The next one is Matrix. Again, you will need to hop into Pexels and download it. Decrease the length of the video to match the video that you have in the timeline. Make sure the Inspector tab is selected and then change the composite mode from normal to screen and change the opacity until you think it looks reasonable for your video. And that's pretty much it. Here is the end result. The next one is one of my favorites, used a lot in music clips and gives a really cool touch to your video and even pictures. You will need two things, a person that has some contrast in relation to the background. In my example, this lady has a black clothing and somewhat lighter colored background. Click in the video or picture that you want the foreground to be and go to the Fusion page. With the media one selected, press Shift plus Spacebar at the same time and search for BC. Click to add this brightness slash contrast option. Do the shortcut again, Shift plus Spacebar and search for LKY to add Luma here. Now, here in this effects window, change the contrast slash expand until you get only the clothing of the person with these squares, excluding the background. To get things even better, you can also increase or decrease the gamma levels to make the selection of the clothing better. Select the brightness nodes and decrease the saturation all the way down to zero. Increase or decrease the contrast if it also helps the selection, but in my case the contrast is perfect on the default value. Let's go back to the edit tab and get the background just in the bottom of our video or picture and because my picture has an aspect ratio different than the background video, it will be necessary to change it by going here to File and Project Settings. Check this Use Vertical Resolution here and click at Save. Now, your background video got smaller, so it will be necessary to change the zoom levels right here. And that's pretty much everything for now. Thanks a lot for watching.